Thank you very much. Well, it's a familiar sound, this one, isn't it? The Vuvuzelas have been saying what a big fan I am of them, but actually they're drowning us out here. We can barely hear ourselves think. We'll try not to bang on about them too much. But first of all, the team news is the players prepare to come out of the tunnel in this magnificent arena. There are two changes for Chile, with the West Bromwich Albion defender Gonzalo Chara coming in, as well as their main centre-forward in Humberto Suazo, who returns from injury, with Rodrigo Miller and Jorge Valdivia missing out. We knew Valdivia would be out because his wife told Chilean television the other day that he had a thigh strain, so that was quite handy of her to prepare us. For Switzerland, there are three changes. Out goes Senderos, who limped off in the last game with an injury. Steve von Bergen replaced him in that game, and he starts again this afternoon. And Bonetta is replaced by the fitter on Valorum Barami of West Ham United. And Alexandra Fry, their main centre forward, replaces Dirty Ock. And sitting next to Jackie is Danny Mills. Hello, Danny. Hi, good afternoon. Hi there. I, I didn't watch the Spain-Switzerland game live, but I listened back to the 5 Live commentary last night, and I expected it to be a game where Switzerland uh, were defending under siege, throwing everything they could in front of shots raining in from all angles. But it wasn't really like that, was it? Spain had lots of possession, but they didn't really test Switzerland as much as I thought they would have done. No, Switzerland were very well organised, uh, a fantastic win for them, and it's given them a huge platform, especially in today's game, to, to go on and qualify from the group. You know, they, they have Honduras still to come in, in their final game, and you'd thoroughly expect them to win that. So at the moment, it looks like Switzerland, neither Chile or Spain, and obviously with that final game, uh, Spain versus Chile, is, looks like it's going to be the crucial decider. And, and Chile looked uh, very good, didn't they, against Honduras, but... Uh Perhaps similar to Spain in the sense that they're a very technical side, lots of short passing, but more direct than Spain. Do you think they could cause Switzerland more problems today? Yeah, definitely. They, they, you know, they've got some very, very good players. Uh, you know, South American sides are always technically very, very good, uh, but like the Argentinians especially, you know, and they, they, they have a bit of a bite to them. Uh, so, you know, it should be a decent game today, I expect. Switzerland, for them, you know, a point or three is fantastic and should almost see them through uh, for the bit Honduras. Chile, it's a game they really have to win because, um, obviously, their last game against Spain is going to be very, very difficult. Um, and, you know, the last thing they need is, is Spain coming out and being all attack against them. What have you made the world, of the World Cup briefly before the anthems uh, kick in? You, I understand you've only just arrived in South Africa. Well, I, I think I've, I've timed it pretty well um, for the sort of the last second round of matches and, and then on to the final group matches it, it's really now starting to, to kick off teams are realising they have to win and it's now starting to get exciting well the anthems are about to be played and I believe it's first with Chile Chilean national anthem. Switzerland have never beaten South American opposition in the World Cup. Here's their anthem.
uh, the Swiss national anthem. And just before kick-off, uh, Danny and Jackie, I was very impressed by Alexis Sanchez, uh, who, who's the uh, Chilean right winger. Um, Danny, as a full-back, what did you think of him? Well, I think you know that Chileans are, are littered with talented players. I think you know it's very, very difficult sometimes. You know, tricky, pacey wingers, always difficult. You know, I think the the Swiss, what they have got in their advantage, they they'll be very well organised, uh, buoyed in, in confidence from from their previous shot, and I expect them to to sit back a little bit and maybe be a little bit cautious, um, which is should make for a great game because Chile really have to go out and win this game. And Jackie, they say in boxing that styles make for good fights, and there's going to be a, a big clash of styles here, isn't there, between the two teams? Yes, well, we saw very different games, of course, between uh, Chile and uh, Honduras in the first game and against Switzerland and Spain in the first game because, of course, Sp Spain were fully expected to walk all over Switzerland, but they stood firm, they were very well organised and they didn't allow Spain to, to walk all over them and, and they didn't even manage to score a goal, whereas Chile... Uh, beat Honduras by just the one goal to nil but it could have been so many more so it will be fascinating we're expecting to see Chile being aggressive strong but also very skillful and in Switzerland we're expecting them to be organised and try to nick the odd goal so it will be fascinating and you say it could have been more than one um, they will probably be helped by the return of their arch striker today because they didn't really have much of a cutting edge Chile did they? Well, very much so. I think the, the general thinking was that if Umberto Suazo, the number nine for Chile, had been fit in that first game, then it would have been considerably, considerably more than one. But he's back from injury today, so it'd be good to see whether they can create as many chances and whether he manages to finish them off. So, match 31 in the 2010 FIFA World Cup between the leaders in Group A, Group H rather, Chile and Switzerland, both unbeaten. Commentary now with Danny Mills and Jackie Oatley. Well, thank you very much, Manny. We are at a magnificent arena, a really fantastic stadium in the Nelson Mandela Bay Stadium in Port Elizabeth in the Eastern Cape. It's a, a purpose-built stadium, just over 45,000 capacity with, if you've seen any of the pictures, it has a, a white petaled roof, which cost an absolute fortune, which is why it went 50% over budget to make. And there is not a cloud in the sky. It's an absolutely wonderful setting. There is quite a wind whipping up around the place, as we found out when we were in the media centre before the game. And we were a little bit concerned the whole thing was actually going to collapse around our ears because it's, it's so windy around here. But we are just a few seconds away from kickoff. I'll run you through the two sides. For Chile, we have Bravo in goal, a back four of Isla, Medel, Ponche and Gonzalo, with Carmona, the holding midfielder, as we get the game underway. Vidal and Fernandez in midfield, with Sanchez on the right, the player that Manny was talking about. Bosijor, the score against Honduras in the first game on the left, and Suazo up front. For Switzerland, Benalio in goal, a back four of Lichtsteiner, von Bergen, Grichting and Ziegler, the former Tottenham defender. A midfield of Barami, the West Ham player, Inla, Hugel and Fernandez, who scored the goal, the famous, famous goal against Spain. And Alexandra Fry, just in behind Blaise and Kufo. As we are just 30 seconds into the game, it'll be a goal kick with uh, Chile attacking the goal away to our left in their red shirts and dark blue shorts and white socks. And Switzerland in their white shirts and red shorts and red socks. And as you might expect, we have a party atmosphere inside the Nelson Mande Nella Mandela Bay Stadium. The Chile fans ahead of us making all the noise as a free kick is blown and a yellow card already inside the opening minute and three seconds of the game. Humberto Suazo has been booked. Well, <laughs> You know, straight back from injury, um, making a, an impact already. But what is it interesting already, the, the Chilean lineup we were talking about long before kickoff, we weren't quite sure. It almost looks, from how they set up at the moment, as a, as a, as a, a three, uh, three at the back, three in, three in midfield, uh, and then pushing forwards, um, almost sort of three up front with, with one in behind. It's a, quite a narrow formation, um, but they, you know, it really does look like an attacking lineup. Very much looking forward to seeing Chile play as the ball goes out of play on the far side for a throw into Chile in the right back position where Danny Mills made his name as an England footballer. 19 caps he won for his country, played in all five games in the 2002 World Cup. So the man knows what he's talking about when we've been talking about behind the scenes incidents and whether everything's been blown out of proportion. We'll maybe talk about that a little bit later as there's a foul and a free kick to Chile on the far side, which is taken quickly. 
looking forward to seeing Mauricio Isla play, somebody that um, Pat Nevin was absolutely raving about when he saw their game against Honduras, a couple of players he was raving about as they come forwards now on the left-hand side with Bozijor, the goal scorer in that Honduras game. Chile in possession on this near side, five yards or so in from the touchline with Fernandez, and it's just too far ahead of Bozijor, and it's out of play for throwing to the Swiss. Yeah, I'm thinking already that the, the pattern of the game, you know, the, the Swiss two banks of four and then sort of a, a 1 1 formation, uh, going to sit deep and looks like they're going to allow Chile to have the ball. And like I said, Chile have very, very attacking formation, three at the back, uh, and almost a, a three in midfield, uh, one in front of that, and then literally three up front. So hopefully um, it should be a very entertaining game. We've played almost three minutes here on Five Live Sports Extra. This is the World Cup, we're in Port Elizabeth. And we're expecting quite something of a game as the supporters, the Swiss and the Chileans ahead of us are having quite a party on that far side. A really good atmosphere. Of course, it's a shame that there are quite a lot of empty seats inside the stadium as we've seen at pretty much every game so far. There's a bit of head tennis as the ball's taken down by Fernandez. We have one on either side, which can get confusing as the challenge comes in as Gelson Fernandez is there as well. And it breaks over to the far side to Gary Medal, the player they caught, or Medal, I should say, the player who's nicknamed the Pitbull. So I'll take it he's no shrinking violet. And Danny Mills was no shrinking violet in his day. We were having a nice little chat over dinner last night about uh, the way he used to enjoy playing against certain wingers, naming no names, but quite a lot of psychology involved. Now, Chile in, position on the, in possession on the far side by Medell, played down the right-hand side. As uh, Chile lose out, and it's going to be a free kick to Chile. As uh, Reto Ziegler, not too impressed, he said he got a foot on the ball, which he did initially, and then he just clumsily bundled into the back of uh, Alexis Sanchez, and he's conceded a free kick midway inside the Swiss half over the far right hand side. Yeah, let's just hope, you know, so far, disappointing free kicks, a lot of, a lot of players hitting the first man, delivery is all important. Well, let's see what they can do here. It'll be Fernandez with it, right-footed, in towards the danger area, headed away at the near post, though, by Ziegler. Didn't beat the first man. Still Chile in possession. As a shot from long range comes in from Sanchez. Rather ambitious. Now, how much did that have to do with the ball, and how much did that have to do with the fact that he simply overhit it, Danny? Well, I think we've seen an awful lot of that players trying long-range shots. Uh, for me... The, the ball's been used in the German league all season. Uh, they haven't really had too much of a problem. Haven't really had a chance to have a kick about with the ball um, at all. So can't really comment too much. But it, it shouldn't make a huge difference. Do you think the Premier League missed a trick by not doing the same thing? Well, uh, unfortunately, um, sponsorship rights and all that sort of thing um, is, is difficult. Um, and obviously uh, not sponsored by the, the Jubilani ball, unfortunately. Switzerland with a free kick inside the centre circle. We'll go over to David Law at Wimbledon in a moment for some important news on Roger Federer. We'll just see what happens with this free kick as it comes to nothing. So come in, David Law. Right hand side, the ball is called out. Oh, we don't seem to be able to hear from David, but we'll be right back with him. The last we heard was that Roger Federer, the most famous Swiss of them all, was in deep, deep trouble against Alejandro Faller of Colombia. We heard he was also a breakdown in the third set as well as being two sets down. But here come the Swiss, their first attack of the game, picked up by Barami on this near side. Facing back towards his own goal though, and he plays the ball back over the halfway line. Steve von Bergen, who's in for the injured Philippe Senderos. He's had awful problems with injury. Player from Arsenal who went on loan to Everton, but he's now signed with Fulham. We'll be hoping to put those behind him. We'll be hoping we'll be able to get back into this competition if at all possible. No goals as yet. We played six and a half minutes in Port Elizabeth, the place where England will be playing against Slovenia on Wednesday night. Now let's see if we can hear from David Law at Wimbledon, David. Yeah, the comeback could be on here, Jackie, because Roger Federer trailing by two sets to love against the unheralded Alejandro Fire of Colombia. Now has a set point in the third set. He leads it by five games to four. Does Federer, he has an advantage as well. And Fire, who's been so impressive throughout this match, so brave, hasn't has put up such a fight. And Federer has had all his hands full throughout this match. But it's Fire now serving down the centre with break 
back point against him and Roger Federer who's got to come back from two sets to love down if he wants to stay in Wimbledon at the first round stage goes down the centre with his return cross court goes his forehand and he's put it onto the line as Federer and Federer's back in the match it's two sets to one now for Alejandro Fire and Roger Federer is still in it Thank you, David. Fascinating game, and he'll be fascinated by what's going on here. It's nil-nil in Port Elizabeth, but Switzerland have a free kick. It's level with the left-hand side of the penalty area. I thought it was a little bit harsh against Gary Medell. Danny may disagree with me in a second, but we'll see what happens with this free kick as the referee urges the players not to rugby, rugby tackle each other as the free kick eventually is played in it's a high one, it's over the heads of everyone and it's behind for a goal kick yeah again a wasted free kick really poor delivery, uh, yeah I think just as he was, uh, the, the, the pit bull just tripped over the ball um, and may have just nicked his hand um, but yeah, touch unfortunate maybe to give a free kick away, but again, wasted by the Swiss yeah, total waste by Alexander Fry, he is their main man, big boost for them that he's back from injury, he was expected to miss the first two games but he's uh, managed to come back in time for this one. But he didn't expect to be coming back with his side having got three points against Spain. Absolutely extraordinary result and really kick-started this World Cup into action. People not too impressed with some of the matches in the early stages, but we've had some absolute corkers. And we're hoping for one here. Chile in possession on this near left-hand side. Bozajor, though, is offside, which really is unforgivable, bearing in mind he's looking down the line. Yeah, no excuse for that. Can, can see everything. Uh, just trying to steal an, an extra yard. Got plenty of pace. Doesn't need to do that. The boys of Danny Mills with us on Five Live Sports Extra. If you are intrigued and fascinated by what's going on at Wimbledon and Roger Federer, then, of course, we have full commentary over on our sister station, Five Live. But we will, of course, keep you up to date here on Sports Extra as well. A lot of these players will be wanting their hero, Roger Federer, to do well as the ball goes behind for a goal kick. One of them, Steve von Bergen, the Swiss centre-half, is a huge Roger Federer fan. So you've got Federer at Wimbledon wishing he could watch this game. And von Bergen here at the World Cup, kind of hoping that he could have watched Federer in action, but he may well get another chance, bearing in mind that Federer looks to have rescued the situation for now at least. And Chile have a free kick, 10, 15 yards or so inside the Swiss half, taken quickly. Played over to this near side. There's the Swiss, as Chile with a shot comes in and it's palmed away by the goalkeeper. And on the rebound, and the second time, it's parried away to the far side, and still the danger's not cleared, and eventually Fernandez gets across, and that'll be a corner. Well, two fantastic opportunities for Chile. Initially, it was Vidal with a strike, and it was parried away, and a second shot came in from uh, Carlos Comona, and a second save by the goalkeeper, and it's behind for a corner. You could argue that both shots were pretty much straight at him. And as another cross comes in for Chile, and he's headed straight up into the air, and away by Switzerland, initially away from the danger area, and up towards the halfway line, Danny Mills. Yeah, the, the first shot, a lot of movement on the ball. Um, he, he's hit across the ball, dipping into the keeper. It was straight out and made a decent save, and the second shot wasn't quite as fierce uh, from Kimona, uh, and an easy save. But Chile now really starting to take a little bit of control of the game, and, and starting to sort of really start to ramp up the pressure on Switzerland. People just starting to get used to this ball as well. Now we're into the second round of matches. They know what it can do, and they know that it's worth having a pop. Even if it is at the goalkeeper, they can move in the air and cause real problems. And we've seen a few times that normally reliable goalkeepers, such as any aimer of Nigeria, can parry the ball, slightly get his footing wrong, straight back into play, and it can result in a goal. But keepers always moan about the ball. Every single World Cup, it's always, you know, the grass is too green, the pitch is too wet, the ball's too round. Typical goalkeepers always moaning about something. <laughs> I know you don't have any sympathy for anybody at all, apart from fellow right-backs, Danny, but surely they could have come up with a decent ball for a World Cup. Well, again, but it happened, I think it happened in 2002, 2006. It's always, you know, they're trying to make it lighter, more exciting. Um, Why? Why? I don't understand. Why not just put a normal football, put a fancy design on it, market it how you like. As here comes Chile down the right-hand side. And it's Sanchez inside the penalty area. It lays the ball back for Suazo. And, well, did it take a bobble right in front of him? We'll be kind and say it might have done. But he certainly missed kicks. 
Well, the, the first through ball was a great through ball. Sanchez is onto it. And it, it just looked up uh, to cross the ball and took his eye off it and couldn't quite take it in his stride. And then as it came across... Uh, Suazo. Suazo, sorry. A wild shot. A little bit excited, I think, uh, and, and missed it completely in air shot. We got quite excited as well. We are hoping for the opening goal of the game. But well, it was right on the edge of the 18-yard box. But uh, impressed with Chile already. You know, I haven't really, apart from those two long-range shots, but they're... Every time they get the ball, the, the two wide players go very, very wide. The full-backs push on, and you know, they, they've really got an attacking feel about their team. They, they look confident, they pass it sharply, you know, and they are making the pitch as big as possible and creating an awful lot of space for, for the people in the middle of the park. Something that England didn't manage to do the other night. Well, this is the sort of performance that, that England need to do. They, they do well to watch this game, the style that Chile are playing with. Right now, they've almost got five players up front. The full-back is now pushed up as far as anybody else you know and they are really putting the pressure on the Swiss it's Gonzalo Chara with a through ball looking for Suazo he's claiming the corner kick instead it's going to be a goal kick An extremely highly rated manager in the Argentinian coach Marcello Bielsa in charge of Chile's the third foreign coach that they've had but he's extremely highly thought of even contemplating taking Chilean citizenship they absolutely love him there and both these coaches, incidentally, are trained PE teachers. Which I don't think that's why we're in PE today. But that's bad, isn't it? Well, is it unforgivable or is it just bad? I'll just leave it. You'll just leave it, all right. Throwing on the far side to Switzerland. We played 13 and a half minutes. We're still awaiting the first goal of the game. But it's fair to say the chances have very much fallen for Chile. They've been created by Chile. We haven't seen anything of Switzerland so far in the final third. Not so much as a cross, simply a free kick that went over the heads of everybody from Fry. But apart from that, they haven't tested the Chilean goalkeeper, Claudio Bravo. Free kick on the halfway line to Chile to be taken by Carlos Carmona, who's, uh, in fact, he leaves it for Gary Medell. As he opts to go wide to the far side to Sanchez, recognisable in his banana-coloured boots. And that's out for a throw-in on the far side as the bald-headed Umberto Suazo isn't impressed with the decision. As Ziegler takes a throw-in, it's a good one as well. Up to Blazing Kufo, we haven't seen a great deal of so far. The striker for Switzerland. And that's another throw-in to the Swiss, which Ziegler will take. Ziegler looks for options. No goals as yet, with a constant blaring of the horns in the background. It goes over... Ahead of uh, Fernandez, and he can't keep it in play, and it's out for a goal kick to Chile. Yeah, for me, it just looks like the, the Swiss are struggling to get decent possession of the ball. They, they get it up to um, to Kufo. He's got no support. He's surrounded by sort of three Chilean players. Swiss are going to have to maybe change mentality. If they sit back for the whole game, the Chileans will create chances. Now, here's Fry for Switzerland. As the Swiss just about managed to retain possession... Chileans wanted a free kick but play on as the ball's dinked forwards and away by Chile up towards the halfway line picked up by Gokken Inler plays it back to Grifting and goes all the way back to his goalkeeper Benalio made a couple of saves already from uh, long range efforts the first one being the more dangerous of the two the Chileans on top in terms of the way they've played in terms of the chances they've created but with almost 16 minutes played on five live sports extra we're still awaiting the opening goal of the game lovely turn by Sanchez but he has three white shirts around him and he's crowded out of it immediately they know all about him and they've done their homework on him quite clearly oh definitely a fantastic touch brought it down on his chest a uh, little Cruyff turn running at three players and really just got bundled out of it through sort of no fault of his own those are your heavy touch almost puts his teammates in trouble but they're OK, and it's picked up by Vidal, one of the two hard men in this Chilean side, Medell being the other one. And a free kick taken quickly by Waldo Ponche. Fabulous name. As Sanchez is offside, it was a lovely idea, the three ball towards him. It's just too far ahead of him. Surely this game's not going to finish 0-0. You wouldn't have thought so at the moment. But again, just, just going back to the point where Vidal had the ball, you know, they're, they're all happy to have the ball under pressure. You know, they're technically very, very good, but a bit like the Spanish, the Argentinians, they're strong. They, they have no issues when they're marked of having the ball. You know, and, and that's what England fail to do sometimes. We get a little bit nervous about receiving the ball with your back to play when you're being tightly marked. You know, the, the South Americans especially are exceptional at doing that. 
the voice of Danny Mills with us on Five Live Sports Extra, former England defender who's with England in the 2002 World Cup. And now here's Ziegler on the far side, the left back for the Swiss, back in possession, plays a short, neat ball in. This is good triangular passing from Switzerland as they just lose possession with the ball's out of play on the far side. They were claiming a throw in. They haven't been able to create anything just yet. And then neat passing movement just then came to absolutely nothing. And then Khufu, who was on the ball, and then was uh, penalised for a free kick, in fact, for shirt pulling, has been a frustrated figure so far. He's had no service at all. Well, what, what the Swiss haven't done, they haven't got anybody in behind the Chilean defence. Uh, they're not even looking to do it. There's Chile just, again, Chile trying to do that constantly. The, the, the two wide players, Bosejour, Sanchez, constantly looking to get in behind the fullbacks. Switzerland are playing everything in front of the Chileans, and it's become, it's really very, very easy for them. Even the little bit of spell of play they had with two or three one-twos on the far side, it's all in front. The Chileans can just watch it um, and allow them to play that. They're not hurting the Chileans at all. And we've had no goals as yet, but we're expecting one or two as the breeze blows around the Nelson Mandela Bay Stadium. Switzerland in possession. In the middle third of the field, but again it comes to nothing. It's prodded forwards rather in hope than anything else as Balan Barami, the West Ham United player, charges down the ball and it's out of play. Switzerland to take it in the left back position. And we're hearing that Federer, Roger Federer, having pulled a set back at Wimbledon to make it two sets to one down against Alejandro Fire, has been broken now in the fourth set. You have to wonder, what on earth is going on with Roger Federer? An outstanding tennis player, hoping to make history in this tournament. Maybe he's got his mind on the football. He did say he was pretty gutted he couldn't watch it, but hoped to be over and done with quickly so he could catch the end of it. But if he's not careful, he could be over and done with in the wrong circumstances as another free kick is blown. A referee... Perhaps, it, perhaps he meant he wants to get out for the second round. Hey? If Switzerland get through, perhaps he wants to come out and watch. Perhaps he's had, perhaps he's had enough of tennis. <laughs> it would seem like it. That's the only explanation. He wants to get out as quickly as possible so he can come over here. I think that, that would possibly be one of the greatest upsets in, in tennis of all time. Well, we thought that Switzerland beating Spain was a huge upset, but a chap called Alejandro Fire from Colombia, who admittedly most of us haven't heard of, has come very close to knocking the legendary Federer out of Wimbledon. Here's Nkufa for Switzerland. They're attacking the goal away to our right, but they're not getting very close towards it as the goalkeeper has led a charmed life so far. Bravo, and they've won a free kick, Chile, on this near side. And just like England the other night, nothing's coming off for them in the final third. They haven't, they haven't broken down this Chile defence. They haven't even looked close to it, have they? And, and they really don't look like they're trying to either. Um, and I think that's a, a dangerous game. They, they've almost set their stall out. They know that a, a point is a very, very good result for them. Uh, but I think, you know, if they're too negative, they invite too much pressure on, Chile will have several chances, and, it, and if they take one, it's very, very difficult to suddenly change your, your attitude in the game and, and start attacking. Well, I saw a quote from a, a Spanish newspaper after their defeat, as in Kufu nods the ball on towards Fry, but the goalkeeper, Bravo, came out and did well. They said the Swiss, the Swiss hung off the crossbar and won with rebounded, fluky, offside goal. Not that they're bitter at all. Well, no, exactly. Suggesting they didn't come out to play football. As that's a, a ball forwards for Chile. Rather hopeful. The goalkeeper takes no chances. Benalio puts it out of play. Chile wants to take the throw in quickly, and they do. Here's Bozajor. Plays it back to the West Bromwich Albion player, Chara. And Vidal plays it forwards. Now here's Medell. With the orange boots. Now... Here's Sanchez with the yellow boots. And good play by Chile. Lovely football from them, but a penalised for handball. I think it was Isla with a handball. That was rather harsh, but still, lovely football from the Chileans. Yeah, definitely. And again, you know, you've got the right back almost in a, a centre forward position. You know, pushing on as far as possible, trying to get up the pitch. And you know, I, I really hope that the Chileans and, and the Spanish go through out of this group. You know. Switzerland are doing a good job, but just being organised, we want to see attacking, flair football. I think the Spanish have got that, and, and the Chileans look certainly to have that as well. Well, Spain play Honduras this evening, 7.30 your time, at Ellis Park in Johannesburg, as here come the Swiss. Here's Jelson Fernandez, edge of the penalty area. Cleared away, though, as far as Barami in the midfield. Chile defending well. 
as Suazo gets a foot in, but it's picked up by the blonde-haired Barami, who goes down, clutching his left leg, and the referee jumps into action, goes straight to his pocket, and he's going to produce a second yellow card of the game. And this time it's to Carlos Camon, who will miss the next match. Yeah, he's going to that chair. He's, he's just missed timed it, and, and he's caught him with his, with his trailing leg. Barami has made an awful lot of that. He, he's rolled around and, and squealed a little bit. It was a foul, it was a booking, um, but I think, you know, Barami definitely made sure um, he was going to get a yellow card. And uh, Carlos Camona is visibly upset at the fact that he's going to miss that last game against Spain in Pretoria on Friday, but he's going to have to try and put it out of his mind as his side try to help them move to that next round as Ziegler, the former Spurs defender, will take this free kick. Left-footed, centrally, in towards Nkufo. He doesn't get too much of a connection on it. And it comes back to Von Bergen. And it's still Switzerland in possession. Is it dinked in towards a penalty area? Good defending once again by Chile as they bring the ball away through Vidal. Now here's Bozajou on the halfway line in front of us on the Chile left. But he just overhits his pass forward and it goes all the way through to the goalkeeper. Yeah, it was a, not a great ball from Bozajou, but that's what the Chileans are trying. They're trying to get the ball down the sides of defenders in that space in behind them. Getting the defenders turning round, going back towards their own goal. A lot of the passes have been slightly overhit so far, but it, what it does do, it then gets the defenders to drop a little bit deeper. You know, the centre forwards can then come off. They've got space in front, time to get the ball and, and turn. You know, it, it's a simple, a simple philosophy. You stretch the game and you know to, to make space for yourself. Well, they have been enjoyable to watch, even though we've seen no goals so far. Chile living up to their billing of being perhaps one of the surprise packages and one of the dark horses of this tournament. As they're coming forwards now, here's Sanchez. Isla rather on the far side, but it just skips off the surface and out of play behind for a goal kick. But they're quick, aren't they, these Chileans? Well, it is only nil-nil so far, but I'm I'm impressed with them. You know, they they defend. You know, they're tenacious in the tackle. They're all very very strong. They look very very fit. Uh, and like I said, I, you know, I'm the way they want to play. They, it's not long ball football, but they're trying to play the ball as quickly forward as possible. A bit like you'd expect Arsenal to. You know, the first pass, the first look is forward, you know, and, and the quickest route to goal possible. Ball looking for Sanchez. He doesn't get anywhere near it. As Fry tries to latch onto the loose ball, but it's really good defending by Waldo Ponche until he concedes a free kick. No, that's, that's harsh. He's, he's flipped it over somebody's head. And, well, he must have been booked for saying something. That's so far the referee has been very, very officious. Um, a little, that's very, very harsh for me. He flipped it over the guy's head, jumped up, brought it down again. His foot was maybe waist high, and he's been penalised. He obviously must have said something um, to the referee and, and got a booking for it. That's the third yellow card of the game. The Suazo, Carmona, and Ponche. They'll be running out of players if they're not careful. Good job they've got a 23-man squad as Ziegler prepares to take the free kick, left-footed into the penalty area, and he's headed goalwards by Grifting, but it's well wide of the right-hand post. Yeah, two decent balls in from uh, from Ziegler from free kicks, but again, trying to score from probably 16 yards out with a header, very, very difficult. That ball, it just needs to be another five yards closer to goal uh, to give them a chance. Still no goals in the Nelson Mandela Bay Stadium in Port Elizabeth where England will face Slovenia on Wednesday night. It really is a fantastic stadium. And you just wonder what on earth they're going to do with it after this World Cup. It is a concern. There have been a couple of purpose-built stadiums, such as the one at Soccer City in Soweto in Johannesburg. Now, there won't be football teams playing there specifically. We might get the occasional rugby match. Now, quickly taken free kick by Chile. Here's Sanchez. Tries to turn infield. But he's ushered out of it as Switzerland looked to break quickly. Slightly heavy touch by Nkufo. And it's played straight back to him. And it comes off his feet and Kufo gets it again just inside his own half. The big, tall, powerful, veteran Swiss striker plays the ball forwards. And it's all the way through to the goalkeeper. Again, uh, Kufo had the ball 40 yards from goal. And he's waiting for somebody to make a run. You know, he's sort of going, please, come on, come on. And... You know, the, the Swiss just look reluctant to do it, but you, you picked up on it earlier. As soon as Sanchez gets the ball, they are swarming around him, two or three players, you know, not letting him have time on the ball, trying to hustle and, and bust him out of it. They're, he's obviously a, a danger for them. Very much so. He looks to be a classy player, and he has uh, Chile come forward with Suazo, putting a bit of pressure on the 
Bender, but the uh, offside flag is up over the far side. As Grifting, who just put that header wide a couple of minutes ago, was quite relieved the offside flag was up as he fell on his backside. Yeah, it was a late flag as a, a bouncing ball. He tried to some sort of a, a centre half's overhead kick uh, didn't quite work. Unfortunately, the, for him, uh, the linesman put his flag up. They just shouldn't try it, should they? Do what you're good at. Do it simple. You know, I was always taught, you know, stop those that can play and give it to those that can play. You know, it's sometimes you really have to break it down and keep it simple. Know your place. I think that's what well, it is, it's, yeah, it? and, and play to your strengths. Is Suazo back inside his own half? There's Chilia defending away to our right, and that's a slightly overhit back pass from Isla. His goalkeeper Bravo did very well, as and that's a foul inside the centre circle. Well, I thought it was a foul by Inla instead he's won the free kick for Switzerland inside the centre circle and I think we might be seeing quite a lot more of this referee more than uh, even more than we have done so far throughout this match as Barami comes forward and he tries to chest the ball down but quick as a flash and Chile are in there and they get the ball away well they've been quite impressive going forwards but they've also been impressive in defence so far yeah like I said you know they they look a very, very fit side, a very strong side, and we're just seeing again on, you know, the benefit of the monitor, the pass back, it was awful, really. Um, nearly gave Kufa a fantastic chance. Fortunately, the, the keeper came off his line um, very, very quickly. Nearly very, very embarrassing for, for Isla. That's a free kick to Chile, taken quickly and badly, it has to be said, by Suazo. He knew exactly what he was trying to do. He, he looked up and he saw the very dangerous Sanchez in a central position, but it was just way too far ahead of him. And just uh, doing my research, saw some quotes about this Chilean side and uh, this Slovakian coach, Vladimir Weiss, after a Chilean win in a friendly back in November, said they just don't let you get anywhere near the ball. That's the problem in playing them. And you can see exactly what he means. Oh, technically, they are superb. You know, they, they are passing the ball. Here's Beausajor and the offside flag is up for about the tenth time in the game. Yeah, he, again, he's, he's got to look down the line of the ball. You can see what they're trying to do. You know, they're, they're trying to get it in behind, just offside. You know, he, he's got pace. He's obviously a lot quicker than the fullback. Give yourself an extra yard. You know, it's just a waste every every time. And his manager will be fuming with that at half time. So much ability, but they do need to be a bit more careful about the offsides. A couple of needless ones so far from Beausajour. Just trying to force it that little bit much, maybe trying just a little bit too hard. Like I said, you know, give yourself an extra yard. You've got the pace on the defender. Let the ball go there, then run in behind him, and, you know, it'll be far more effective. Switzerland have a free kick, uh, throw in, excuse me, on this near side. Lichtensteiner to take it. Takes it short, back to Lichtensteiner. But he's crowded out immediately. As soon as he gets the ball to his feet, there were two red-shirted Chilean players around him. Lichtensteiner to take it again. Another throw-in into the feet of Barami. But again, he has two Chilean players right on his back. He's not given a second, and then he lashes out with his elbow. And he could be in trouble here as he smashed his arm into the face of Arturo Vidal, who's gone down clutching his face. And the referee is reaching to his pocket. And if he's not careful, Barami is off. And Valon Barami has been sent off for Switzerland after half an hour of this game. The scoreline is nil-nil. He got frustrated. He had a player right on his back. He didn't like the close attention. And Valon Barami smashed his elbow into the face of Arturo Vidal. And Barami is dismissed. Well, he, he actually had sort of two bites at that. I think it was uh, Boche Zor, first of all. He, he had a little sort of swing out at uh, And then second time around, as Vidal's all over him, that's that's poor from Vidal really that's it's an arm across him it's not you know he takes a knock the first one's a knock in the face the second one again if we see it again neither of them really you know it's a free kick maybe at best it, it's not an intentional elbow he hasn't gone out to hurt the player as, he, as he's holding the player off he's, if you can imagine he's just put his arm across his chest but for balance your elbow is generally sort of neck height and he's caught him as he's sort of pushed him away, he's caught him with his arm. Yes, it, you know, it's a free kick, but it's not a sending off. That is not your old-fashioned Mick Harford, somebody just going across and smashing somebody in the face. And, and the, like I said earlier, the referee has been slightly officious so far, and really, you know, he, he seems like an accident waiting to happen. Well, I have to say, Danny, that I was fooled also by 
Vidal because from where we were up in the stand first time we saw Barami's arm come across and we saw Vidal go down clutching his face and initially it did look as though he'd been smashed but you're absolutely right on the replay it shows he was nothing of the sort it was just a bit of a tap on the shoulder really from behind but the actions and the cleverness and the way the player went down sold the referee who was actually a lot closer than us of course well exactly and also you had the linesman who was literally under his nose you know it was right on the touchline in front of him you know referees have to be a bit stronger and have to have a bit more understanding of the game you know you've got your arms up protecting the ball and again now that's going to make it very very difficult for, uh, for the Swiss now here is Vidal and there's more controversy at this World Cup after what we saw last night by Cater in the uh, Brazil Ivory Coast game a lot of talk about what happened with Rivaldo in 2002 and the ball was played towards his shins and he went down clutching his face and he got fined for that. And most of we've seen what happens after last night and of course there's plenty more to come after this. But there's a, a Chile free kick. We'll talk about that more in just a second with Danny. There's a free kick to Chile towards the left-hand side. 10, 15 yards outside the penalty area. And Fernandez to take it in towards the near post and it's headed wide. Goal kick. Yeah, well, again, you know, we, we've seen it last night with, with Kaka. You know, the way the fella's gone down on, under that challenge is embarrassing. You know, if you saw it again for the second time, and we just see it again on the replay, Boje Zor has a think of it. He gets a little tap in the face first. He looks at the referee thinking, well, can I, can I fall over here? As we just see it again. And then, as he comes in, he's holding the player off, he's holding him off, and he's just got his arm up. You know, he's both bit of shirt pulling. That's not a delivery. That's no way for me of sending off absolutely not having seen it again but the way we saw it first time around the way we saw the arm come out quickly the, it looked like a forearm smash as you were saying and it simply wasn't he barely touched his shoulder with his hand albeit at pace and it may well have been a different angle but there are two officials the referee and the assistant who can't have been far away it was on this near side where that well, it assistant wasn't, referee was it wasn't was. dissimilar to, to Kakar's last night you know which was again never obviously I understand the Brazilians aren't going to appeal that because obviously they, they've qualified it was a second yellow card for him. Um, so it, 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 it clears him out, effectively. So he's now got another two bookings before he gets suspended again, so that's probably why they've left that. Um, but, yeah, for me, it, it's embarrassing. As, as a player, as a grown man, you know, you've had a little flick in the face, you go down, you know, screaming. It, it's just wrong. You don't need that in football at all. Now, here come Chile on the far side. Isla with the ball over the head of everyone, picked up by Bozajor, just outside the penalty area on the Chile left. And Bozajor has some close attention from two Swiss players, Licksteiner and Fry. And a free kick has been awarded by this controversial referee, Khalil Al Gandhi from Saudi Arabia. And a free kick to Chile, just three yards outside the penalty area on the left. Yeah, and this is what worries me about the World Cup and officials. You know, how many big games has he had to actually referee in, in Saudi Arabia? It's, they're not used to this. They're not used to the atmosphere. They're not used to the pace of the game. And, yeah, and hence you're getting some very, very strange decisions. Fernandez to take the free kick. Right-footed in towards the six-yard box, headed away by Nkufo, and if it goes out, that should be a corner. It came off Nkufo. Corner to Chile on the far side. I have to say, Danny, I've lost a lot of... A lot of love for Chile. I was really enjoying the way they played. I was really looking forward to them continuing the way they played, maybe breaking down the Swiss defence, just to see a few goals, to see an entertaining game. And I'm really, really disappointed with the way that they've effectively got Valen Brami sent off as they take the corner short. Played back in by Isla and up towards the halfway line. That's the second time they've tried that corner, um, playing it deep to, to Isla, who, you know, who drops off and tries to cross it. And again, for the second time, his cross was very, very poor. His Suazo checks back and plays a dangerous looking ball in towards uh, the feet of Medell, but it's too far ahead of him and into the hands of the goalkeeper Benaglio. I think, you know, watching Chile play, you know, if people ever get the chance to see Chile play during this World Cup, for me it's a fantastic example of, of how to play football. Forget about the sending off, and that's just completely wrong. Their, their spirit, the way they want to play the game, the pace at which they play the game, defending and attackingly, I, I think is superb. Yeah, and if they just cut out the histrionics, then everyone would be much better off. But now they have a little bit of extra space, which is just what they wanted. As Suazo plays the ball forwards, it's a poor one. And another poor pass allows Chile to pick up the ball. 
Here's Medell, who just loves to snap into a tackle, and then he goes down to the challenge of Fernandez rather cheaply again. Here's Bosichor. This time he's onside on this near side. The Chile left a good recovery tackle though from Lichtsteiner, and the ball's out for throwing. Yeah, Lichtsteiner did well there. Got caught underneath the ball, um, facing the wrong way. Allowed Bosichor to see the number on his back and get in behind him, but a good recovery tackle. With them Chile again, header away by Grichting and away by Lichtsteiner. As uh, Chile come forward again, and Berto Suazo, the unmistakable figure with the bald head and the barrel chest. Chile in possession on this near side. Arturo Vidal lets fly from long range, and it bounces once and goes wide of the left-hand post. Again, slightly over-ambitious. Uh, you, you know, you're going to have to do, although we have seen some horrendous goalkeeping mistakes uh, throughout this World Cup, you know, it's got to be something special, really, to beat someone from 40-odd yards. He's recovered well, hasn't he, from that, that smash in the face. I tell you what, if I'd have been hit as hard as I, as he clearly was by Barami, I'm not sure I'd have recovered quite as quickly. Well, you know, and that's the, that's the only thing that spoils it. Um, but, you know, again... We, we, we all know the South American teams that they will go down uh, given any opportunity they, they will call it gamesmanship um, but what, it might actually be detrimental to them because now the, the Swiss have got a real excuse to sit deep they won't venture forward at all you know, and they will try and shut up shop but here comes Chile once again with Bozeshaw he's onside he keeps the ball in play he's up against Lichsteiner gets the cross into Suazo just gets underneath the header it's slightly behind him a really difficult angle and it's high over the bar I'll tell you what that is an absolutely fantastic cross that's one of the best crosses of the tournament so far he's, he's whipped it in with pace unfortunately it's maybe half a foot uh, behind Suazo and he's got to sort of lean backwards uh, to try and get it on target but that's the sort of cross you need whipped in with pace you know the, just outside the six yard box the keeper can't come from it Suazo just in a little bit too early and he had the defenders looking at each other as he got in between the two of them. Umberto Suazo, who's been on loan at Real Zaragoza from Monterrey in Mexico. But he's very much their main man. And you can see why he's a, he's a strong, powerful figure. But he hasn't had any, any crosses apart from that one to feed off just yet. But no doubt he and Sanchez will continue to, to uh, combine throughout this game as... Switzerland attempt to come forward and just see the number of red shirts as soon as Switzerland are in the final third of the field there are red shirts everywhere and in the let's fly from long range well wide of the right hand post no you're dead right Jack although they are very very attacking minded the moment it gets into their half they, they swarm round they don't give you any space you know they get right up against you and don't let you settle on the ball Inla, by the way, plays his football in Udinese. That's the same club as the two players on the right flank for Chile play for, Mauricio Isla and Alexis Sanchez. So they'll all know each other very well as Bosijor comes forward for Chile on this near left-hand side. Has nobody anywhere near him. Goes around the outside of Fry and crosses into the centre and it's Chester down. It's a chance for Chile on. He's straight at the goalkeeper. What an opportunity for Alexis Sanchez. The first real sight of goal that he's had. And he struck it straight at the goalkeeper, Benaglio. Again, brilliant cross from Bochezor. Slightly more floated this time. Sanchez, a fantastic first touch. Takes it down, composes himself, and then unfortunately the ball just drops just under his feet and he can't really get an awful lot of power or direction into the shot. And it, it almost dribbled into the keeper's arms. Lovely combination by Sanchez and Isla as Isla just overhits the ball over the top of... Bozichor, but he applauds the cross because he knew exactly what they were trying to do and breaking very quickly from back to front. And what Chile have done since the sending off, and they're starting to really come into the game now, they are getting their two wingers effectively right on the touchline, chalk on the boots, stretching the game as much as possible. Ch uh, Switzerland have got to defend narrow, and that's allowing uh, the two wide players to get the ball at will with time and space and to, to put crosses into the box. And just symbolic of the fact that Barami has been sent off the Swiss midfielder after 31 minutes. Fry, who's one of their main men up front along with Kufo, has been back at his own half quite a lot since then, helping out his defence. And if we didn't see a great deal of the Swiss going forwards before, unlikely we're going to as Chile come forwards once again. Sanchez over the far side, up against Ziegler. Sanchez has Inla on the overlap if he can find him. But uh, they're unable to get the shot in and then the shot's charge down as it drops to Vidal but the referee spotted an infringement not too sure what it was perhaps a handball amongst it is the ball was charged down or well, whatever he's seen I haven't seen it and it's a free kick to Switzerland but again the, the ball spread wide out to Sanchez with time and space 
good pass into the box and unfortunately it's Fernandez and, and Suazo really just got in each other's way um, both a little bit too keen um, you know to, to get the shot away on target that's Danny Mills with us on Five Live Sports Extra we're live in Port Elizabeth where Switzerland are down to 10 men against Chile no goals as yet but they're going to make a substitution the first of the game and it is Alexander Fry who missed the first game through injury has come back today but has had to do plenty of defending since that sending off and he's to be replaced by Tranquillo Barnetta well I think instantly you know defensive switch uh, taking off the your creative player if you like who, who plays in the hole uh, bringing on a, another midfielder uh, really now just to make it a 4-4-1 um, and obviously the intentions from uh, from Hitzfeld that he's going to have to shut up shop Barnetta the Bayer Leverkusen left-sided midfielder who was uh, linked with Arsenal last summer nothing came of that he played in that first game there were three changes mainly because of players being injured or coming back from injury and now they have an opportunity to put a ball into the box have a free kick and it is the substitute Tranquillo Barnetta who will take it on the right-hand side almost level with the penalty area just a yard in from the touchline Switzerland in their white shirts and red shorts Barnetta takes it right footed into the danger area no Swiss player could get on the end of it but it drops to it drops to uh, Fernandez who lets fly well wide of the left hand post it was in Kufo excuse me yeah good ball into the box but again the Swiss not really attacking the ball but ball was put into the right area no one had any conviction to go and I'm going to head this ball and really it was an easy clearance in the end for, for the Chilean defenders two minutes to go before half time that's a loose pass by Chile picked up by Switzerland once again through Hugel but then he's fouled and then referee does love to blow his whistle doesn't I've, he I've got a feeling we, we haven't seen the last of the cards and, and unfortunately I've got a bad feeling that we might see another red one at some point Our referee Khalil Al Gamdi from Saudi Arabia already booked three players of Chile before sending off Valon Barami we thought it was for a four arm smash or I did initially but clearly it was plenty of play acting initially by Bozeshaw and then by Vidal as the ball goes behind for another goal kick to Switzerland well so you know Chile are, are going to be on top they're going to control the rest of the game they, they, they're playing it in the right style it's very difficult sometimes to play against 10 men uh, when you know they do just sit back and you've got to break them down but they're, they're trying to do it in the right way by spreading the game getting the wide players literally on the touchline and that's both of them at the same time uh, creating as, as much space as possible uh, and I think you know second half's going to be very very interesting and the wind has helped the goal kick goes straight out of play on the far side Chile in possession no goals as we have just 40 seconds or so of this first half remaining plus added time as the pitch is all in shadow there's just a bit of sunshine underneath the rose petaled roof on the far side it's an absolutely beautiful day and I feel like a right plonker with my thermals and my fleece as Danny Mills was keen to point out earlier that it looked a little bit daft in my uh, warm clothing but it can get pretty parky in winter in the evening so we shall see Chile in possession free kick awarded taken quickly and here they come once again Gonzalo Chara of West Bromwich Albion floats the ball towards the left wing towards Bozeshaw but Barnetta cuts it out plays the ball forwards quickly looking for Nkufo and it'll be dealt with eventually by Ponche and there'll be two minutes of added time at the end of this half as Medell retains possession now the offside flag has stayed down here's Bozeshaw can he whip in a decent ball we know he's able to as he takes on the fullback Lichsteiner he crosses it in towards the far post Suazo's underneath it and he drops for Sanchez Inless with him it's still Sanchez tricky play from the winger crosses in deflected keeper pounces on it again brilliant ball in from Bozeshaw stopped the fullback slowed it right down knocked it past him got right to the touch line and just played that little dink to the far post unfortunately Suazo was not the tallest uh, and couldn't get his header Sanchez then had a little uh, drive across the face of goal took a deflection and easy save for the keeper but you know Sanchez and, and Bojo's all playing really two out and out uh, wingers as, as a front three they're the key to this game and they're very enjoyable to watch as they come forwards once again here is Sanchez with his yellow boots he has in there on the overlap Isla and he uses in this a fabulous ball into the centre as Bozeshaw puts his hands to his face he wishes he gambled 
and thought the cross might come in. He didn't, and he just ran away from him a couple of yards in front of him. But what makes it enjoyable is they're positive. Every time they get the ball, they're looking to do something. They want to get forward. They want to take their full back on. And, and that's what we want to see. You know, that's, that's what wingers should do. Danny Mills is happy to watch wingers skinning fullbacks now that he's retired. Oh, it's brilliant. You know, and you, <laughs> if, if I was out there, it's, it's difficult because you know every time you get it, you've got a challenge on your hands. And, you know, one missed time tackle, you're a booking, and then you, you can't really touch them after that. We have just 15 seconds of added time remaining at the end of this first half in which Valon Barami was sent off after half an hour. Totally unjustly having seen the replay, though it didn't look like it at the time. Chile passing the ball around, as they have done for much of this half. They are fantastic to watch. There is the half-time whistle from the controversial referee from Saudi Arabia, Khalil Al-Gandhi. We've got plenty to talk about at half-time after that first half of Ballon Barami sending off, which was ridiculous, having seen the replay. Initially, it looked as though he'd smacked Bozajou in the face, and then Vidal... But on further inspection, it's clear that Vidal had gone down, having just been nudged in the shoulder, if anything else. And there are plenty of chances. But they didn't really work the goalkeeper enough as the referee... Uh, 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 sorry, I'm confused. Is, is players swapping shirts at half-time? Now, have, have, I, have I got this wrong? Is that meant to wait till the end of the game? Do they actually swap? There's two players just swap shirts. Sanchez has swapped with, I think, um, I think it was Gricting. Uh, and there was another one as well. <laughs> two, two players have swapped shirts at half-time, and that's the first time I've ever seen that. Do you they're a bit confused? Do you think the game's over? Well, that's just bizarre. Uh, whether the... I've never seen that before in my life. That's you know, I, I know a lot of players change their shirts at half-time, um, but yeah, to swap shirts at half-time is a, is a very, very strange one. But this is a very strange game, isn't it? Well, it is, and I think the second half is going to be all chilly. You know, the, the Swiss, I expect, will get out of that half maybe a handful of times. Uh, and really, it's can Chile create? Can they break them down? You know, they seem to have a little bit of guile. They've got a pace. Uh, and really, like we said before, Chile need to win this game uh, to give themselves a real good chance. Because the last thing they want to do is go into the Spain game having to beat Spain to qualify. And just talking about Sanchez, as we did in that first half, there was so much chilly passing and so many chances created. It's difficult to really ask you properly about him. But having seen him play now and seeing how tricky he is, how do you deal with him? Well, it's very, very difficult. What, what he does is he goes so wide that as a fullback, you, you've got to stay in close to your centre half. You've got to stay sort of 10 yards away from him. And he's standing 20 yards away. So when he gets the ball, you haven't got time to get to him as he has his first touch. That then gives him the chance to get his head up and start running at you. And as a fullback, once your winger is running at you, you're on the back foot. If he knocks it past you, you've got to turn and chase after him. So really, it's just the width that he's creating and it's positional play is allowing him to get the ball and then just run at people. And that makes it very, very difficult as a fullback to defend. So it's fascinatingly poised at half-time, Manny. Chile nil, Switzerland nil. Thank you very much, Manny. And Chile have just come out about uh, 45 seconds or so after their Swiss counterparts came out onto the field. And it looks as though there's going to be a double substitution by Chile. It looks as though Mark Gonzalez, the former Liverpool player, and Jorge Valdivia will come onto the field. Valdivia, we were led to believe, had a, a thigh strain. Well, that's what his wife said. Perhaps that's why he hasn't why he hasn't started the game. Perhaps he's uh, massaged it for him. <laughs> and coming off is Arturo Vidal. And uh, also coming off is Umberto Suazo. Danny Mills, what do you make of that? Well, you know, Suazo obviously just come back into it. Maybe he's feeling the, the pace of the game slightly. Uh, and again, two more forwards. Chile, you know, they're, they're two wide players are the key to this. They've just got to be a little bit more patient, really. Sometimes they forced it a little bit too quickly and overhit passes in behind the fullbacks. Um, but this this half will be all chilly, uh, and they just whether they can now break down, which up to now has been a very very good defence. I'll run you through the two sides in just a second, but we very much enjoyed the first half performance by Chile. As complete neutrals, of course. Good defending, good on the attack, despite the fact there are no goals. The only thing that spoilt it for us was the histrionics by the two players, Beausajour and uh, Vidal, who uh, effectively got Barami sent off. Although uh, you, Danny Mills, 
had a bit of a ding dong with Mark Bright at half time. He well, disagrees. We, we nearly came to blows over it ourselves. Um, right, he was saying it was aggressive. For me, definitely not. He, he, he has hold of his shirt, it's a foul. He's got his shirt round about his shoulder and then he just moves his arm a little bit higher and he catches him on the chin. It, it, it's a foul. Nothing more for me. Uh, I know in this day and age you can't raise your arms, but you know they were both tussling for the ball. Uh, unfortunately, you know Bright, who was old school, you know centre forward, a little bit soft really, and I, and I think that's why he's, he's airing on the side of the of the forward. Soft is not a word that's been uh, used to describe Danny Mills in the past. Now, Chile attacking the goal away to our right. When we get a break in play, I'll run you through the two sides. Here's one of the substitutes, Valdivia, with a neat ball forwards, a through ball for Beausjour. And it just took a deflection on its way through to the goalkeeper. So, bravo in goal for Chile. They have Isla, Medel and Ponche at the back with Gonzalo, Carmona, Fernandez and Gonzalez in midfield with uh, Sanchez and Bozajor, the attacking wingers. We're expecting the number 10, Valdivia, to be the most advanced player in the absence of Suazo, who's gone off at half-time. He didn't have too many opportunities, just one whipped-in cross from Bozajor that was slightly behind him, that headed over the bar. So we'll see how that changes the way that Chile play. And for Switzerland, who are down to ten men after Barami was sent off. Benalio in goal, a back four from right to left of Lichsteiner, von Bergen, Richting and Ziegler. A midfield of Inla, Hugel, Barnetta, the substitute, and Fernandez with Blaise and Kufo. Up front, and another yellow card for Chile, uh, for Switzerland, excuse me, and it's the substitute Barnetta who's managed to get himself in the book after just not too long, five minutes or so in total of being on the field. Again, Beaujajor just running at him, gone past him. Oh, he's unlucky there. He, he just catches his, his heel. It's a little flick. It doesn't really mean to do it, uh, but brings him down once he's past him, and you can understand why the referee gave that one. So, Chile with a free kick on the far side, just a couple of yards in from the touchline. Be played in by Matias Fernandez, right-footed. And he's played it short, and the shot comes in, it's deflected. And Chile have taken the lead, and it's their star player, Alexis Sanchez. Oh, but the offside flag is up. Sanchez was celebrating. He is still celebrating. He hasn't seen the flag yet. He has now. The goal's ruled out. Well, can't wait to see that again on the monitor. And just it comes in now. Well worked free kick off the training ground. Sanchez doesn't hit it particularly cleanly. There are three players in offside position as it comes in. Interfering oh, with play. He was right in front of the goalkeeper, to be fair, it, in his line of vision. It that was. the count as interfering with play. It, well, he, he almost steps over the ball, uh, and that's the only reason. I don't think he touched it, um, but he was, as you say, he stepped over the ball. Possibly a good call from the official, uh, maybe a touch lucky um, as well. But again, well worked off the training ground, everyone was in the box, pulled it back to the edge. Sanchez, bit fortunate really, didn't strike particularly clean, he took the deflection, which sent the keeper the wrong way, and, and Switzerland a, a touch fortunate maybe. Switzerland with a free kick, Barnetta into the penalty area, Hugo was there, he couldn't get ahead to it, goal kick. Well, we're expecting Switzerland only really to threaten from set pieces in the second half, bearing in mind that they've been without Barami for 15 minutes of the first half and five minutes of this second half. Still no goals between Chile and Switzerland in Group H at the World Cup, the FIFA 2010 World Cup, as they like to call it. And here's a chance now for Sanchez. Threw ball to him, took it down beautifully. But good defending, though, by Stefan Grichting to hook it away. But just for a second, oh. the danger man once again looked to have put them in front. Brilliant little ball over the top from Fernandez, just over the top of the Grichting's head, took it down immaculately as it came over his shoulder. And to be fair, though, Grichting got back with a very, very good saving tackle. But that's what Chile looking to do, those darting little runs in behind. Valdivia is hauled down, free kick, not from there. He's taken it from five yards behind, but play on, says the referee. Played into the penalty area. Another chance for Sanchez. Initially, he got half a yard. He didn't get a shot in, though, and enabled from Bergen to clear the ball away. But he really is the danger man. He just wondered, Danny, Danny Mills, whether it's just a matter of time before Sanchez gets on the score sheet. Well, that's the thing. You know, you, you can't afford a, a team of Chile's quality that much of the ball uh, without giving chances away. And what I like about Sanchez is he's, you know, first half he was coming out really, really wide. 
obviously Switzerland have talked about that at half time and have tried to stop it so he's, he's seen that happen intelligent play and all of a sudden now he's making dart and little runs in behind the full back between the centre half and, and getting on the ball that way you know obviously not just a player of, of ability um, but obviously thinks about his game very very well we played almost six minutes of the second half still nil nil in the fabulous Port Elizabeth Nelson Mandela Bay Stadium Nelson Mandela Bay Stadium I'm not going to bother saying it next time we're in PE and there's a free kick on the halfway line which the controversial referee from Saudi Arabia Khalil Al Gamdi has awarded Chile in possession now they like to play the ball short but they're not afraid of passing long here's a through ball in towards the feet of Valdivia now here's Sanchez the danger man three white shirted Switzerland players all around him as he tried to play the ball forwards and they have no choice but to close him down as quickly as they possibly can he has such quick feet he has fantastic control as we saw the way he brought down that ball over his shoulder an incredibly difficult skill but he made it look easy but what it will do you know you've got three players around him there must be space and players free um, on the rest of the pitch and if Switzerland aren't careful they'll overcompensate uh, for Sanchez and leave big massive gaps in other places that could work in their favour too now here's Fernandez. Plays a through ball down the left-hand side, just too far ahead, though, of Gonzalez, And it's behind for a goal kick. Mark Gonzalez, a, a familiar figure to English football fans, so not that familiar, as he signed for Liverpool a, a few seasons ago, but he didn't get a work permit for the first season. He had to go away on loan to Real Sociedad, and then he only made 14 starts the following season. Didn't quite work out for him in England. Yeah, and again, uh, try, the right idea, but again, a lot of the time... Chile are trying to get in behind they're just overhitting that final pass uh, and, and it's that final little bit of quality they just need to ease back and touch more composure and they will create an awful lot more chances but again the referee stops it with a again another nothing foul mm, he's enjoying himself isn't he the referee well this is probably his, his 15 minutes of fame um, I don't think we'll, we'll see him again in a World Cup I did promise a couple of uh, officials who I follow on Twitter, actually, just before I came away, that I'd be as nice as possible to real officials. But this chap really hasn't really covered himself in glory, although... Oh, no, that, that's against my religion to be nice to officials. <laughs> no. I'm not going to be overcritical because it is a really difficult job. It really, really is. But, Daddy, you can say what you like about them. But he's, uh, he's shown a flurry of yellow cards as Chile come forwards with Bosashore down the far left-hand side. Chile in their red shirts, dark blue shorts and white socks white shirted Swiss head the ball away and it's uh, with Switzerland over the far side with Barnetta at the substitute and Kufo tries to play the return pass to him Blazing Kufo who's just finished his spell with Steve McLaren in 20 in the Netherlands he's going to Seattle Sounders to join his wife and kids who are based over there and he's their top scorer the club's top scorer, 20s of all time, so he goes with their good wishes as Valdivia now, hooking the right touch line. Cleared away though by Ziegler, and it comes back off to Valdivia and across, across the face of goal and towards Gonzalez on the far side. Well, should there have been somebody in the centre? Well, uh, yes, uh, there should have been, but again, a little bit more composure. He got through with a couple of ricochets, uh, and, and then all of a sudden he's in the box clear, and he just he put it across into a good area, but there's no one there. You know, he, he had time to have another touch and just wait for somebody. That's the only criticism of, of Chile that I could make. Their final ball just lacks a little bit of composure. They, they're trying to force it a little bit too quickly, uh, and they're giving it away in, in that last little bit. There's a chance for Sanchez again, a really difficult one for him to control, and he wasn't able to. Got a touch to it as he goes all the way through to the goalkeeper. Now it's picked up by Ziegler on this near left-hand side. And back to Gritting, the centre-half, who had probably their only chance. And it's been charged down by Sanchez into the penalty area. Sanchez one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. And the keeper smothers it. And he's helped out by his defender, Von Bergen. And Switzerland just get away with it. Well, he should have done better. He made the chance himself. He was through first. He chased all the way back. Then he closed down the centre-half. Fantastic example to kids watching football. And as the, the keeper does well, he makes himself big, doesn't go down early. Cross into the penalty area by Isla. And it's still with Chile and Bozajor on the far side. Now here's Valdivia, who's made an impression since coming off the bench at half-time. Back with Bozajor, up against Lichtensteiner, the right-back. Still Bozajor gets past Lichtensteiner, who gets a foot in and concedes a corner. 
But just going back to that, a, a player of Sanchez's quality, you'd expect him to score uh, through one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. Keeper did stand up well, uh, but, you know, really should hit the back of the net from there. But like I said, great example. His work rate is great going forward, but he works so hard to get back as well. Corner taken short from Bozishaw. And it's crossed into the penalty area. And Kufo, the defender, is back there and heads it away to safety, relative safety on this near side. And the throw in. Lands to the feet of Valdivia. Still Valdivia just on the edge of the penalty area. And it's still Chile in possession. And they've had the lion's share of possession throughout this game, not just since Switzerland went down to 10 men. And it's still with Chile on the halfway line. Uh, patiently you, passing the ball around. Sorry, you can see it building up now, almost ascending off, like I said, is to the detriment of Chile, because now Switzerland are, they're all encamped in their own half, no one is, you know, Kufo is the furthest player forward, and he's five yards beyond the D of the centre circle in his own half, you know, and it's very, very difficult to break down. Here's Sanchez, cuts the ball back from the byline, doesn't beat the first man though in Grichting, the player whose pass he charged down just a few moments ago, Grichting was ponderous in possession and you just cannot be that way with the likes of Sanchez anywhere near you still Chile in possession as the constant drone of the Vuvuzelas rings out around the stadium in Port Elizabeth well, they have a little bit of space, lovely touch from Valdivia initially but Ziegler read the danger and spins away to clear the ball that was very unlucky, Valdivia took the ball on the half turn as it came into him, you know, it was half on the half turn, took it with his back foot, just turned inside and unfortunately his touch wasn't quite good enough uh, to get into the box, it let him down. But that's excellent centre forward play. It, you know, you can see the ball, you can see where the man is uh, and obviously, you know, if you get it to feet and a good touch, you're in on goal. There's going to be a drop ball just by the touch line, which the referee wants Switzerland to get away with. But it's dropped to Sanchez on the right-hand side of the penalty area. Gets a better of Ziegler and it's behind off Gricting for a corner kick. Well, I think that was a bit cheeky by Sanchez. The drop ball, I think they were. I think he thought Ziegler wanted to just smash it back towards the goalkeeper, and as it bounced, Sanchez just nipped in and, and took it off his toe. And I think there's a little bit of a row now. Um, Ziegler wasn't expecting that, but Sanchez has every right. It's a drop ball. You know, I, I like to see the odd drop ball contended for once in a while. <laughs> That's Danny Mills, combative right back, former England defender, with us on Five Live Sports Extra. The corner from the right hand side. Oh, and the header wide just for a second from all of four yards out it looked as though Mark Gonzalez was going to power the header into the back of the net but it went well wide of the right hand post oh, decent ball into the box again three of them went for it and from our position it looked that it was headed goalwards um, towards the corner and it, but unfortunately from the angle that we had it, it went about sort of 15 yards wide a decent opportunity for Chile will their time come if Switzerland manage to hold out for goalless draw they'll be absolutely delirious especially bearing in mind they've got the relative minnows of the group in Honduras still to come they both play their matches on Friday evening 7.30 your time Switzerland Honduras is in Blumfontein which is another good footballing stadium as Chile looking to come forwards once again yet another free kick is conceded well the referee but Chile wanted to take the free kick quickly but the referee oh well that seems very harsh the referee wanted to book the player who'd committed the foul Chile were thinking never mind the yellow card we would just want to take it quickly and then the player who tried to take the free kick quickly has also been booked oh ridiculous referee is an absolute shocker but again it was Sanchez hassling Inla all over the back of him wins the ball off him it's a foul and as it, we've just seen it again now he wants to take the play quickly and oh, what is the referee thinking? You know, the, the player wants to get, you're supposed to give the advantage to the attacking team. And for some bizarre reason, the, the referee books him to try to take a quick free kick. And, it, and now he misses the next game. I'm sorry, but the, the, this referee should not be refereeing in the World Cup. Well, we'll talk more about that in just a second. But Switzerland have a free kick to defend. It's a long way out. It's 30, 35 yards out there's a player Swiss player who's gone down in the penalty area and the referee is brandishing cards like there's no tomorrow Von, Von Bergen's gone down holding his face there was a group of players together someone else has been booked <laughs> this is turning into an absolute farce the referee seems to have lost control of the game it's now Gary Medell who's been booked and there are players 
around the edge of the penalty area, pushing and shoving each other. The referee has lost control. Oh, ridiculous. Someone give my mate Graham Paul a ring and get him back out here. It, not even, he didn't even brandish as many yellow cards as this. This is bizarre. We'll talk more about that in a second after this free kick has been taken by Chile. It's 30, 35 yards out in slightly right of a central position. If we ever do get to see it, it's Matias Fernandez who's standing over it. He takes it right footed, he aims for goal, but one of the men in the three man wall right in front of him charged down the free kick. Now he's Bozichur on the far side for Chile. Plays it out onto the far left hand side to Valdivio. Chips the ball into the penalty area and it's headed away by Inla from the uh, D. Picked up again by Chile on the far side. Bozajor plays it in towards the centre, headed away again by Inla, picked up once again by Chile and Gonzalez. Now here's Isla on the right-hand side, floats the ball in towards the danger area, over the head of everyone and behind for a goal kick. Well, Chile just got to be careful not to get frustrated, you know, and we just see it again now. Trying to look at it on the monitor. Arm, arms, oh, no. Dear, oh dear. That is absolutely pathetic. Well, they've just done exactly what they're upset about Chile doing. It's he's, Von Bergen who's touched, and then he clutches his face and goes down, hoping was, to get the same yeah, thing done he, he, to he Chile. Was, he was pushed in the neck, maybe on the chest, and he goes down holding his face. You know, something really, for me, has to be done retrospectively, because, you know, we're going to end up with eight aside before too long. Uh, and just going back to the referee, that's the only bad thing that FIFA do. I understand that they want to involve as many countries as possible, but these officials are not used to refereeing high-intensity, high-pressure games of, of this quality, and, and they just can't cope with it. Well, I make it five yellow cards to Chile, three to Switzerland, plus the red card for Barami. That's not the last that we've heard of this referee, by the way. We'd quite like to concentrate on the football, but unfortunately, with that last yellow card of the player, the one of the yellow cards, probably the one before that, of the player who took the free kick quickly, him being penalised when he was the one who'd been penalised in the first place, just simply shows a lack of understanding of the game. Now here's Nkufo, he turns well over the halfway line, he has no support initially, he does really, really well, he tries to play a through ball for Barnetta, he'd run half the length of the field, but it's just too far ahead of him. Well played from Kufo. held the ball up really, really well, Waited, 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 but unfortunately, uh, you've got Bonetta charging through. He's against four Chilean defenders. Very, very difficult. And really the first time they've actually ventured in with any quality into the Chilean half. And we're now hearing that Roger Federer is producing quite a comeback because having been two sets down and a breakdown in the third, he's now four love up in the final set at Wimbledon against Alejandro Fayer. Elsewhere, Nikolai Davidenko is two sets all against Anderson. More from David Law shortly. This is good play by Valdivia. Edge of the penalty area. Just tried to cushion the ball through to Fernandez, but it didn't quite get through. The Swiss managed to stick out her foot. And now they come forwards rather hopefully on the attack with Jelson Fernandez, who we haven't spoken too much about. Former teammate of Danny Mills at Manchester City. As the ball goes out of play off a Chilean boot. And there'll be another substitution. A third and final one for Chile with Esteban Paredes coming on and the player who's been taking all the set pieces, Matias Fernandez, coming off. Well, probably not just a tactical change, but thinking because he misses the next game, uh, he needs to give somebody a game, get them some action, um, get them used to the pace of it. Uh, but now he's obviously last throw of the dice for, for Chile, really. Uh, the, he's gone straight up front uh, and they really... it's. For all their great play in the first half, you know, Switzerland have, have been resolute, they've been organised at the back, and it is very, very difficult sometimes to defend against, oh, sorry, to attack ten men, but because the mentality is almost under siege, you sit back, you defend the penalty area, you drop very, very deep and allow the player to have the ball, and you just can't get in behind like they were in the first half. Boys, are Danny Mills with us on Five Live Sports Extra? We were expecting a... Chilean goal rather sooner than this not purely because Switzerland have been down to 10 men since the first half hour of the game but because of the way that Chile pass the ball around so well and they make the most of the space that's afforded to them but still they haven't really tested the Swiss goalkeeper Diego Benaglio enough in the second so half it's just that final ball um, has let them down a little bit of quality 
and again there now that the Swiss team the, the defenders are almost sitting back on the edge of their own penalty area when they come through so trying to thread those little balls through it has to be inch perfect if not it runs through to the keeper or, or gets cut out the Swiss have generally defended pretty well so far we have to give them credit for that well the, tremendously well against Spain uh, very very well organised and again they, they've limited uh, Chile to almost no chances in this second half well it was really just the, the one on one from Sanchez uh, where he should have done better uh, where he's clean through on goal now Switzerland have a free kick 20 yards or so inside the Chile half Ziga takes it a high one in towards Mkufo and the goalkeeper just for a second Bravo wasn't too sure where that was going he took a touch off a Chilean player on the way through and that's a corner to Switzerland yeah again good delivery from Ziegler um, a, a good left foot for me the, the keeper he's, he's got his angles completely wrong he's, he's diving to save that and pushing that wide and it's already sort of three yards wide of the post here's Ziegler with a corner from this near left hand side towards the edge of the penalty area and it's swept away towards the halfway line picked up by Gritting and it's straight out of play well I have to admit I thought that was a good deflection on the way through which had deceived the goalkeeper but it hadn't and as you say the goalkeeper completely got his angles wrong and it was going a good yard wide of the post when he got a touch to it he looked a, a little bit unsure of himself then I suppose he'll always say it's better to be safe than sorry which is true but he almost had to pay for it as Switzerland prepare to make a substitution with Aaron Derdiot preparing to come on. Well, mm. I'd expect him, sorry, to come on for, for Kufo. Um, you know, he's, he's worked hard, but it's, it's very, very difficult playing up front on your own. Um, you know, you're chasing shadows all day long, you know, running from one defender to the next, and he's probably touched the ball three times in the second half. Here come Chile with that danger man, Sanchez once again, tried to play the ball through to his Udinese teammate, Isla. Didn't quite reach him as the Swiss stand firm. They continue to do so as we are three quarters of the way through this match. And Danny Mills was spot on. Blazing Cooper comes off, replaced by Aaron Derdio. Well, so now it's really what have Chile got? First half, they looked very, very good against 11 men, getting the ball wide uh, because Switzerland were, were pushing on a little bit. All of a sudden, now them sat back on the edge of the box. This is the test of a real quality team. You know, can you break them down? Have you got a little bit of guile, a little bit of something special around the edge of the box uh, to create something? Well, Valdivia does really well to keep the ball in play. And now the Swiss have to get it away, as they manage to do. And it's brought away by Hugel. Nice touch from him. Finds Ziegler, the overlapping fullback, deep inside the chilly half now. And the pass forwards from him, looking for, looking for the substitute. Derdiot didn't quite reach him. But at least that was a danger sign there, as far as Chile are concerned. Well, venturing forward, you know, a, a good effort from the Swiss. And I saw that in the Australia game. Um, I watched them against Ghana a couple of days ago. And suddenly, 20 minutes to go, they changed mentality completely, went three at the back and really had a good go at Ghana and were very, very unfortunate uh, not to win the game with 10 men. It was Derdiok racing on to that pass just now. And we saw he almost scored a wonder goal against Spain. They're already 1-0 up as here comes... Here come Chile once again in the shot from the angle. Good defending this time by Grixing. Match point, David, uh, Roger Federer, David Law. It is, and he serves onto the backhand of Alejandra Fala, who has had two sets to love against Federer, and Federer has come all the way back to uh, the ascendancy. Two sets all, five love now for Federer in the fifth set. A winner there from Fire to save the first of those match points, but Roger Federer is on the brink of victory against Alejandro Fire. It has been such a fight for the Swiss, but can he do it here? Now down the centre of the court he goes with the serve. He just missed that centre service line. Federer, after three hours and 17 minutes, serves onto the backhand side. Plays the forehand cross court. It's a clean winner from Roger Federer, who comes back after being two sets to love down. And Federer is still alive here. He wins in five sets to a standing ovation on centre court. The thing is, David, we never doubted him, do we? Uh, I, I'd like to say that's correct, uh, Jackie, but I have to say, Alejandro Fire, who had so many opportunities in this match, as Federer takes the applause of this crowd. He even served for the match, did Fire, but Federer just doesn't doubt himself. He's won this title six times before. Who's betting against the seventh now? Not us. Thank you very much. David Law, live from Wimbledon. Full coverage, of course, on our sister station, Five Live, here on Sports Extra. We're with the Group H tussle between Chile and Switzerland, and it's, it's becoming far more of a tussle than we quite anticipated in, in more ways than one. With Chile pressing and pressing and pressing and trying to find the breakthrough against this resolute Swiss side. 
and still Chile in possession as uh, the ball is cleared away over the far side by Lichsteiner who's gone down clutching his left hip now whether that's an injury or whether he's blaming Beausejour well, Beausejour's shaking his head as if to say well I didn't do anything and he didn't do anything well apart from falling over Lichsteiner it looked to be something that he'd done totally independent of Beausejour at least I hope he's not blaming him for something because there was barely any contact yeah it looked completely innocuous that um, just as he fell over maybe, maybe just twisted his hip and the header away by Grichting cleared once again away by Switzerland over the far side another throw in to Chile can they make their pressure count against the 10 men of Switzerland good defending once again by the Swiss they have that good news well they won't know about it just yet that their hero Roger Federer a god in their homeland has come back from against the odds really of two sets to love down now here's Isla and the cross he gets it all wrong it was a wonderful opportunity to deliver a decent ball into the centre he gets applauded for his troubles but really from that position Isla with his ability should have done better yeah first time really in the second half that Chile have, have got the ball wide uh, to a wide player in space and the ability to, to deliver a ball it happened a lot in the first half it hasn't really happened in the second half now for me Chile are first half they were great and they looked really really good now all of a sudden they're struggling and you, you see this in training a lot you work on it as a defensive team you'll have five or six defenders against everybody else um, and unfortunately you know it's very very difficult uh, to score against you know even six players at the back when you just set them all out just to defend and now Chile have been penalised I wish if I was in England i would be very much looking forward to the highlights programme tonight after this game I'd love to sit down and see all the incidents in isolation of the various bookings, the sendings off and everything. As here come the Chileans once again down the far side. Can Bozajor keep the ball in play? He can, just by the corner flag. Plays it into the centre. He's crossed in towards Valdivia and it's hooked away by Jelson Fernandez. Incidentally, the Swiss have set a new World Cup record for minutes without conceding a goal. It was five consecutive World Cup clean sheets before this game four in the last tournament when they went out in the uh, second round without conceding which is the first team to do so by the way they went out on penalties against Ukraine they're also the first team to not manage to score in a penalty shootout in the World Cup but now here come Chile once again and the danger man Sanchez is calling for it and he gets it Sanchez inside the penalty area but he's was he offside or the flag wasn't up no, there's think, some I kind think, of infringement I think he's given handball um, sort of hit him around the midriff maybe just had a little hand out but Chile almost running out of ideas at the moment you know they are now sort of struggling uh, to break down this very very resolute uh, very good Swiss defence and, and as we uh, as I possibly expected in the first half the player getting sent off has really been to their own detriment and of course for me it wasn't a sending off he made a meal of it uh, and possibly this could be some form of, of karma or, or justice if you like Medell plays the ball forwards down the right channel it's cleared away by von Bergen for Switzerland we have a fascinating 17 minutes or so in store in Port Elizabeth in the eastern cape of South Africa we're at the World Cup and the wind is picking up a little bit and I'm taking great pleasure in having put my coat on having had the mickey taken out of me by Danny Mills for being a big girl's blouse and wearing all these layers and he says oh I'll just show up in a t-shirt and a jacket well I hope you get cold oh look oh, no, you zipped right up to the top look at you eh and you thought I was being a wuss as well it is a little bit nippy it's not very cold at all it's not like we saw last week in Rustenburg when it's very chilly here's Valdivia the ball forwards and the offside flag stays down a chance for Chile surely and it's there finally Chile have made the breakthrough and it's Mark Gonzalez the substitute with a header the cross from fellow substitute Esteban Paredes the first time they've actually managed to beat the offside chart and finally they've broken down this resolute Swiss defence with quarter of an hour remaining and quite possibly Chile might just have taken a stranglehold in Group H it's Chile 1, Switzerland 0 Oh, fantastic through ball the first time they've got the weight correct the little darting running behind the Paradise and a little dink to the far post I, I thought he'd overhit it to start with uh, and there he was at the back post uh, Gonzalez, and he just 
really he touched fortunately heads it down comes off the underside of the bar but now I think that's it Switzerland are now going to struggle and it, just seen again the replay Liechtenstein was very very unlucky Gonzalez headed it down directly into the floor and really it just bounced over Liechtenstein's leg um, but that's the little bit of brilliance or the little bit of luck that Chile needed uh, to, to win this game and now Switzerland have to come out and play and here they come they're attacking the goal away to our left Inler tries to play a ball forwards but well charged down by Sanchez proving what a hard working side they are but he's penalised for clambering over Inler there didn't seem to be too much to it but it's a free kick to Switzerland now, now if I was Switzerland you've got to be careful uh, yes you want to try and get a goal back but you don't want to get hit on the break and concede another because it's quite possibly this, this group will go down to goal difference now I understand the obviously if they get a goal fantastic they get a point but if they lose 2-0 that could be very very crucial when it comes down to goal difference after the final round of games because I thoroughly expect the Swiss to go out and beat Honduras uh, and obviously now if Chile go on to win this they're on six points Spain will have to beat Chile uh, probably to qualify and a substitution the final one of the match is made with Gelson Fernandez coming off and Albert Bonyaku coming on but now they have a free kick Switzerland taken quickly by Bonetta it's skimmed off a couple of players and they've won a corner well it's not really what Chile deserve in the second half uh, but they, they have sort of probed and that's that one little bit of quality uh, finally got them through Ziegler with a corner from the left hand side and it's not cleared initially he's headed back into the danger area and the goalkeeper releases the ball quickly Chile coming forwards on the break with Sanchez who's been arguably the best player in this match and on the right wing cuts in field gets away from his seven his uh, opposite number and Chile just held up in their tracks now with Poncho Chile leading by a goal to nil with 13 minutes remaining a reminder that Roger Federer is through to the second round of Wimbledon and he did it the hard way purely just to entertain the masses on centre court now here's Bozajor on the far side the Chile left comes back in from the corner flag and he lays it off and Chile still in possession on the halfway line. Would you expect them to go looking for a second goal, Danny, bearing in mind they've had to wait so long for the first? Well, I think they, they can control the game now. Uh, they will keep the ball. They've kept it very, very well, as we've always said. Technically very, very good. If Switzerland come out and... It's, oh! Oh, it's a mistake by Switzerland. It looked as though the ball was just going to go harmlessly out of play, but Inla... Isla, excuse me. We've got an Inla and an Isla on the pitch, but Isla of Chile didn't give up on it. And almost made to pay. Yeah, I don't think they'll really go all out for a second goal uh, but I think it will just naturally happen um, that they will now create opportunities as the Swiss possibly uh, push forward a little bit more but what, what I didn't get the chance to mention as you were commentating on the goal I think the, the Chilean commentator just in front of us here went absolutely bananas uh, I would have loved to have heard what he was saying wouldn't have been obviously to understand a word but just his, his passion you know he was jumping up and down was obviously absolutely ecstatic um, the fact that they scored Oh, I'd love to hear that. Maybe we'll have a word with them afterwards, see if they can email us a copy of the goal. Because the South Americans do know how to commentate on goals. Well, obviously, you know, the, the, the famously, you know, the, the, the goal that goes on for about three minutes when they score. Um, but, you know, he, he's up, he, he's animated. Um, and that's what we want to see, you know, people enjoying themselves, get excited about this World Cup. And the Chilean supporters over the far side to the left, and some of them to our right, are uh, bouncing up and down celebrating the goal that took a long time to come for Chile and now they come forwards once again the goal scorer Mark Gonzalez loses out though as Switzerland bring the ball away now here's Inler over the halfway line has options left and right decides to go just behind him now here's Google Switzerland haven't seen a great deal of the ball in this match full stop really they've been mostly defending certainly haven't seen much of them in an attacking third and that's not just because they had Barami sent off really they were doing a lot of defending and almost had a bit more defending to do as Valdivia looked to go forwards Valdivia by the way don't you think from a distance reminds you a little bit of Tunchai the Turkish yes, forward yes, no, the yes he's got that, those, that long flowing hair and, and almost his running style as well but he, he's just fallen over there and, he, and he's somehow he's managed to get a free kick um, no idea why but nothing surprises me with this referee at the <laughs> moment it's an appalling decision though I mean I know we've just had the benefit of seeing it on the replay but still the ball had just run away from him and he thought oh blimey I've left the ball I'm just going to collapse in a heap and he somehow managed to get himself a free kick 
But what the, what does happen now? This we presume Spain will beat Honduras uh, later on this evening. Chile could still quite easily go out of this group um, because obviously if, if Switzerland beat Honduras, they'll be on six points, and it will come down to goal difference. And I'm fortunate enough. I, I'm at the Spain uh, Chile game uh, later on in the in the week, and that is going to be a fantastic game because Spain without a shadow of doubt, are going to have to win that game. Who have you paid off to get to go to that game? It's all the hard work I've put in over the years, Jack. Yeah, right. All, all the, I did, last World Cup, I did Angola, Iran. So I think I uh, finally deserve a decent one. Yeah, that wasn't a corker, was it? Now here's Inla coming forward, and he's chucked himself to the ground. Oh, he's not going to get a free kick. He is going to get a free kick. Well, he looked to have launched himself forwards after that challenge, when he just ran out of steam. Oh, well, he was touched. He had his arm touched by Valdivia and somehow that warrants a free kick anyway I tell you what I think if I was playing these days I think I'd be sent off about five times a game you never get through an entire match Danny Mills we've seen you in action you've got no chance with this referee oh dearie me you wouldn't have lasted the half hour that Barami just about managed now Ziegler has a free kick Reto Ziegler for Switzerland it's level with the penalty area on the right hand side but it's a good 20 yards away from the penalty area as the referee has a word with various players in the box telling them to behave and there's only a one-man wall of Valdivia and it's dinked in towards the goal but it's easy peasy for the keeper straight into his midriff yeah that's the first poor really ball uh, from Ziegler you know, the rest of his free kicks have been pretty decent uh, it just overhit it slightly um, but again the referee has, has given a free kick for I suppose a little bit of pushing in the box but still, there can't have been a worse decision in this World Cup than the one in the USA-Slovenia game. We were well, you were talking about referees from smaller nations not really deserving to be here, bearing in mind that they don't referee in big pressure matches. But it's almost as if the referee bottled it. When the free kick came in, he thought, hang on, there might be a winner here. There was pushing and shoving, but not by any of the USA players. It was all by Slovenia. Well, I heard this morning a piece on the radio that you know the, the, the standard of refereeing they were quite pleased with. But I think there's been some horrendous decisions. That probably comes from earlier on in the tournament. We'll talk about it again in a second, but there were some fantastic decisions, some difficult ones, not, not very obvious on the eye. But since then, there have been far more contentious ones. Now, Ziegler has a corner on this near left-hand side for Switzerland. It's not cleared initially, and it drops a long way out as it's booted high over the bar by Lichsteiner, who, as you may be able to appreciate, has never scored for Switzerland. Well, you know, it, it comes out to him. He's, he's got decent time uh, and space to, to line it up. It launches it, and unfortunately, that's a full-back shot, and it sailed over the bar by about 45 yards. We have seven minutes remaining on Five Live Sports Extra. Chile leading by one goal to nil. Gonzalez, the substitute, the former Liverpool player, with a header. After a cross by Paredes, his fellow substitute. We're getting a shot of Otmar Hitzfeldt, the Switzerland coach frustrated with this team and he might be more so as Chile racing away and here's another chance for Paredes and he skies the ball over the bar what an opportunity another swift Chile break and this time they couldn't hit the target the offside flag didn't go up rightly so it was a mistake in the Swiss defence Oh, it was a great little ball through again, perfect timing, just took a nick off the defender um, and it, it almost worked beneficial for Reyes, it, it just popped up slightly and as he volleyed it, it, it should have hit the target, you know, you've got to test the keeper when you're clean through one-on-one. -on -one. What an opportunity for Chile to add to the goal difference as Danny was saying and also, most importantly, to secure these three points because that game against Spain on Friday after Spain particularly have been bitten on the bum by Switzerland in that first game it's going to be extremely difficult and an absolute humdinger and something that I am going to miss because I'll be on an aeroplane home but I hope you have a nice time Danny oh, well, I hope so, I'm, sh I'm sure that's the thing, you know fortunately now the, the World Cup, the first week or so the first round of matches is, is always tentative you know, and people are saying, oh, it's a bit slow. It's, the, you know, as you get sort of towards the end of the group where teams have to start winning, you know, it's really starting to spice up now and, and come to life. Here come Chile once again. But uh, the ball forwards is charged down. Now Ziegler bringing the ball away over the halfway line for Switzerland. They're attacking the goal away to our left, but Ziegler loses control of the ball and he may be paid, forced to pay for it. Here's Gonzalez coming forward. He looks up, he's shaped to shoot. He had a crack, comes off on Bergen. 
and behind and a play for a throw in on the far side ambitious though from Chile every oh, time they're looking to attack that was poor from Gonzalez though they, they, they did fantastically well uh, Ziegler gave it away they broke it was, all, it was four on four Sanchez was in acres of space on the right hand side and he's gone for a wonder goal from 35 yards out he needed to get his head up bit of composure sliding Gonzalez free on the right hand side and he'd have been clearing on goal Chile coming forwards once again, leading by a goal to nil. Four and a half minutes remaining in Port Elizabeth. Slightly windy Port Elizabeth. We're a couple of kilometres away from the coast. There's a lovely beach here. Not that we particularly got to see it. We saw a little bit of it in the dark last night. But it's uh, much warmer here on the coast than it is inland. About nine degrees or so warmer than Bloemfontein, which is rather more on the chilly side in the South African winter for this World Cup. There's Switzerland now in possession on the far side with Barnetta, one of the substitutes. All six subs have been used, by the way. Switzerland, remember, down to ten men as Valdivia does really well. The substitute looking to come forwards in a central position. He slides the ball in towards Sanchez inside the penalty area. Sanchez crosses. It's another chance for Chile and it's just snatched out by Gonzalez and straight at the goalkeeper. Again, Chile now starting to, as Switzerland push forward slightly more, creating one or two opportunities. And that was almost, I think what we call is a good baton um, from Sanchez. He went to cross it and he pulled it back behind everybody else. Uh, and obviously, fortunately, the, the shot was tame and, and bobbled it into the keeper. He's inland, a central position for Switzerland. Controlled really well by substitute Bunyaku. We haven't seen much of yet. Only winning his fourth cap for Switzerland, the Kosovo-born player, just like Alan Barami, who was sent off. Still looking for his first goal, though, for his adopted country. Throw in by Ziegler on this near left-hand side. And it's out of play for another throw in to Ziegler. Chile have to hold on for three minutes plus added time for this crucial three points, which would put them top of the group temporarily at least. In fact, they will stay top of the group because the two sides playing tonight, Honduras and Spain, lost their first matches against these two. One of them, not a surprise. The other one, Switzerland beating Spain. It was a, an enormous surprise, even though the Spanish weren't too happy with the fact that Switzerland defended so much. But that's all part of the game too. As the ball's hooked in, I nearly said towards the danger area, but it wasn't remotely because it's gone straight out of play over the far side. Not the best cross in the world you're ever likely to see from the substitute Sturdiok. But what it does now, there's all sorts of pressure on Spain. You know, they have to go out tonight, they have to put in a performance, and, and, and they have to win. And, and really, uh, they will want to win by a few goals. Um, so, you know, again, that should make for a decent game this evening. Yes, we have two minutes here on Five Live Sports Extra in Port Elizabeth. We'll have commentary of that match in full tonight. Spain against Honduras from Ellis Park in South Africa, and the flag is up against Pereira who's a little bit naughty has to be careful I wonder whether we can get another yellow card we haven't had one for quite a few minutes Chile have had five Switzerland have had three plus a red card that's quite some going well hopefully you know, I did predict another red card um, hopefully I'm going to be wrong um, you know, and he will keep his cards in his pocket till the end of the game 90 seconds remaining of this Group H clash as Switzerland come forwards looking to try and salvage a draw. And here's Inla, but he's ushered out of it by two red-shirted Chile players. Here's Valdivia. Now he's Sanchez over the halfway line to Paredes, who crossed a few moments ago for the only goal. It's Paredes going to go alone! Oh, well wide to the right-hand post. Only just wide of the right-hand post. What an opportunity for Paredes. He set up the first goal for Gonzalez. He so nearly made it 2-0 himself. Oh, fantastic play. It, it cuts inside, makes a great angle for himself, and it just pulls it oh, two or three feet um, across the keeper and, and misses the post. But, you know, a great break, uh, good skill. But again, you know, Chile can't keep wasted opportunities. They did it in the first game and they've wasted quite a few in this game. They need to start putting the ball in the back of the net. Free kick to Switzerland, taking quickly in a central position, given to Inla, the wasted free kick really, because, except they've won it back. Now here's Ziegler, and chance in the penalty area, oh, the last minute of the game. What an opportunity for the substitute, Aaron Derdiok. He stabbed the ball just wide of the left-hand post. It was a very swift move from Switzerland. Caught Chile out at the back. And that's the best chance they've had of the entire game. 
and he's put it wide from 14 yards out. Well, I'm no centre forward, but that's a terrible miss. You know, he's 12 yards out from goal. He's got time. He's trying. Goes for the side foot into the corner. It was good play from from Switzerland getting there. Great little flick. He's in. Open, he's got to hit the target from there, and that's that's an unbelievable miss, really, for me. It's a great, great chance. They really haven't created too many. I could barely think of a, a good chance that Switzerland have had in this entire game, and it was a really good move as well. Oh, I now, think it's their only shot on target. A, yeah, Chile go looking for a second goal as the shot comes in. Oh, sorry, from, a shot not on target, but they're their only shot. And it was, it was a, a good move, good little intricate play, a nice little flick inside it, and he he was composed and he just pulled his shot three foot wide and you know just with a keeper to beat that's disappointing Otmar Hitzfeld almost collapsed to his knees in the dugout the man who's won 19 major trophies a, a couple of Champions Leagues with Borussia Dortmund and Bayern Munich an outstanding coach twice world manager of the year and he almost he almost managed to uh, mastermind a draw in his second game having beaten Spain in the first oh and that's terrible defended by Grifting he wasn't looking and now Chile looking to come forward in added time to seal it here's Sanchez inside the box he lays it off for Valdivia who goes down he wants a penalty and the referee is going to book Valdivia for his histrionics and that will be six Chilean players in the ref's notebook well whether, whether he touched or not that was the most dramatic dive I have seen and in fact he's nowhere near him he puts his leg out uh, uh, Von Bergen he sees it coming and he just throws himself over it he, you can see it again on the replay we're fortunate to see that but it was the most dramatic dive ever uh, and rightly so he, he gets a booking for that that was almost a long jump that's the kind of dive it was it wasn't just a, a collapsing to the ground it was an actually launching himself headlong over the leg of Von Bergen and he hoped he'd make contact which he didn't he wasn't far away but it was a blatant dive well some players are very very clever they wait for the player to slide in and they will just run into it and then go over <laughs> unfortunately he started diving about two seconds too early but his timing's all wrong now last chance for Switzerland we played two and a half minutes of the three minutes to be added on and here's Dirty Ock once again the player who missed so dramatically just now is their one final chance for the Swiss to steal an equaliser in this game as it's played in towards the substitute Banyaku and still it's played back in by Tranquillo by, uh, Bonetta still Bonetta he's surrounded though by three Chilean players who bring the ball away now Valdivia over the halfway line can Chile snatch a second goal as Paredes tries to play the ball through to Sanchez and that's it the game is all over the Chilean players and the bench celebrate they have beaten Switzerland by a goal to nil the Swiss players down on their knees dejected they've had to play for most of this game with 10 men after Valon Barami was sent off for a poor decision by the referee after histrionics by the Chilean players but Chile celebrate because they've gone clear at the top of Group H with six points from two games well very impressed with Chile first half thought they played excellent their style of play lacked a little bit of composure that final ball but they looked very very dangerous all credit to Switzerland in the second half they came out they set their stall out to defend they did it very very well Chile had a few chances, but they didn't really test the keeper and create fantastic opportunities. Uh, one little bit, one great pass through the middle, a chip to the far post, got them the goal. And then towards the end, Switzerland did look to tire and, and Chile hit them on the break. But Derdiot had a fantastic opportunity to equalise. Possibly over the whole game, maybe a fair result, but it was a sending off that was key. And, and like we said at the time, it almost undone Chile because it made Switzerland just sit back and defend. And unfortunately, in the end, the amount of possession Chile were able to nick it. And there's so many yellow cards. There were six for Chile, three for Switzerland, plus a red card. And Fernandez and Carmona will miss the next game against Spain, which now, Danny Mills, you're going to that game. is an absolutely enormous game for them. Oh, well, it's huge. It, you know, we all presume that Spain will beat Honduras uh, later on this evening. You know, that will give them... Uh, that will put Chile on six points, uh, Switzerland on three points, Spain on three points. We then will expect... Uh, probably expect Switzerland to beat Honduras because they'll be out by then so that'll give Switzerland six points Chile six points 
uh, with Spain and Chile to play. So it's, they're going to have to go out, uh, Spain, and whatever happens in the game this evening, they're going to have to win that game. You know, and, it's, so it's, and Chile will just need a point. I don't really see Chile sitting in and defending. I think that's going to be an absolutely fantastic game of football. People say this World Cup's boring. Well, like we said, the first week is always going to be the case. What happens is you do not want to get beat in your first game uh, because it makes an apple struggle, as, as Spain are now going to find out. You know, you, you can go out, even on six points, for instance, maybe. So what will happen is, all of a sudden now, teams have to start winning. They have to start coming out and playing, change formations. England will have to do the same. Germany are going to have to do the same. You know, so it's going to be absolutely brilliant. The next, the last group games, and then we're into the knockout stages. Really now, this World Cup is starting to kick off. And just a final word about our referee from Saudi Arabia, Khalil Al Gamdi. We have to mention him because he's going to get mentioned in all the reports of this game afterwards. Did you feel that he was out of his depth, or did he just make one or two bad decisions? No, he was out of his depth. Uh, there was a point it nearly spilled over. He nearly lost control. He hasn't refereed in this situation before in front of a crowd like this with this sort of pressure. And for me. You know, this is the World Cup. We want the best players, the best teams, and we pick a referee from every country, no matter what. We should have the best officials referee in the best games. Because uh, if not, you know, six, nine, ten cards, am I just looking at that quickly? That's ridiculous. So you now have got good players missing the next game for nothing. That was Danny Mills. He doesn't hold back, and that's why we've got him on Five Live Sports Extra. So, Manny, it hasn't been short of incident, but Chile have taken the three points. Maximum points now in Group H. Chile won, Switzerland.